Okay, for session one of the Quick Start Guide, we will be looking at some basic setup information. And to start, you're going to have to log into the system. So from the main page, you'll click on the Load Software button. And that will bring you into the application where you'll need to log into the system. And we'll do that by going to the File menu and clicking the Login icon. Now from here, you would type in your username and password. There is also a checkbox that says Remember Me. In this case, I have actually remembered my password, but I'll, I'll put it in and hit the Login button. From here, we'll be logged into the system. It tells us our login was successful. Now we can use the system. So general navigation around the system happens through um, button clicks, either through the main menu system here, where you see all the different options of different drop-down lists where you can pull different types of data modules into the screen. So we have the main menu navigation system. We also have an application toolbar that allows you to access other functional areas of the system. As you can see, here's the suppliers area, the products area, the company area, users, customers, so on and so forth. So each of these icons can get you to the place you'd like to get to, or the menu, uh, drop-down menus will get you there as well. Okay, that covers a little bit about navigating through the system. I guess the next thing I'd like to look at is how you will review. The first thing you want to do it, once you've logged in is to review the company information. Now the reason you want to review the company information is because that is the information that will be included on all of the documents that you print and send to your customers. So let's access the company data and we do that from either the application toolbar here where we can click on the company or through the setup menu also company information is right at the top there. So I'll click that and that brings up the company screen which has all the information about your company. Now there's an a main address information here, you'll want to fill all of this in with your contact details in your instance of the software. Um, you'll fill in your name and address, city, state, zip, country, uh, phone, fax, website, and email. Now note the required fields. It's important that you note any fields with a red star at the end are required and you cannot save the data without those fields filled in. For instance, if I were to remove the address here, as soon as I tab out, you'll note that a second star appeared here, letting me know that's a required field. But when you hit the save button, the system will also tell you that you have a required field missing. So I'm going to put that back so that I can get past that. The company setup, again, required fields, uh, phone numbers, are actually set up with what are called input masks. So when you just type data into them, they automatically fill in the punctuation for you. So we have the master contact information. That's what's gonna show up in the top left-hand corner of your letters and documents for your customers where your name and address would show up. We also have a company logo area where you can upload a file from your hard drive that will be the logo that will be printed along with your name and address on your forms. We have three different types of predefined text. The terms and conditions of an estimate are in this area right here. This is a word processor like area that allows you to edit the text and you can actually pull it up to full screen mode here by using this little toolbar icon over here so that you can see more of the screen. You can also minimize it back down by hitting that button again. So this is the estimate terms and conditions, the job terms and conditions, the acceptance terms. Now these three areas uh, determine what is going to be printed in certain places on your pre-printed forms. So let's just to understand what we're talking about here. Here's the estimate terms and conditions. So you have this big uh, set of information here that's that's going to show up on your uh, documents that you print for your estimates and contracts. So let's look at a sample contract. I've got one here in PDF format. So this is a contract. So a couple things to note here. The logo and the address are coming from the company data screen that we just saw. And that's on our, our customer proposal here. Uh, this is on page one. When I scroll down a bit, um, we'll see that there's also a section here where it says customer agrees to all prices and definitions above. What you'll see is that that is coming from the area right here, which is the acceptance terms. So that's the variable text. You have control over what goes there. And then note the estimate terms and conditions. Those are also here at the very end of the document. You'll see starting right here. And you have complete control over that section of the document as well. So that kind of um, gives you an idea of how you can customize the 
the text that will appear on your printed documents. Okay, so that covers the company setup. Now from there, let's go and look at adding users to the system. So underneath setup, again, we have users. You can also access them from the application toolbar from the user setup. So I'll click that and we'll be presented with a list of users in the system. To add a new user to the system, you just click on the add new area right here, which will pop up the user input dialog. From here, I will type in the username, password. And again, so I've just gone through and I've been typing out the required fields. You'll note that pretty much all the fields are required here for a user, first and last name, username, password. Also have a user role. This is for security in the system. This was covered as a more of an advanced topic in another video. But for this for this particular user, I'll make them a basic user. They'll be a little more restricted than an administrative user and I'll mark them as active. So I'll go ahead and save that record. And now you'll see that we've got another user in the list. Salesman, Joe, Joe Salesman. So we have we have a new user in the system. So now this person can log in and create appointments, estimates, jobs, and so on and so forth. And they can use the system. So that's the user setup. The final thing we're going to cover in session one is the customization of the pick lists that are used throughout the system. So under the setup menu, there's a pick lists area, and there's a whole bunch of pick lists. You'll see them here. There's, there's probably about a dozen of them. We're going to look at a couple of them. They all work the same way. But the first one we'll look at is unit of measurement. So we're going to look at a few of these, and we're going to customize some values that we'll use later on in sessions uh, 2, 3, and 4 of this quick start guide. So we're going to look at unit of measurement first. Now, unit of measurement is a pick list that's going to allow us to define different units of measurements so that we can have products categorized appropriately um, and we'll see we'll see that in the product selector. So let me go ahead and add a unit of measurement and then I'll show you where those are used later. So we're going to add a new unit of measurement. The one we're going to add is I'm going to add linear foot and the description will be per linear foot. Okay, and I'll, I'll hit the insert button. So both of these fields are required, the unit of measurement and the description. So I'll hit the insert button. That will get us a unit of measurement. And then I'm going to add one more for good measure and I'm going to add per role. And that will be, again, the description will be per role. And I'll save that one as well. So that gives us a couple of new units of measurements that we'll use for some of the products we're going to add a little bit later. Now let me just show you real quickly here. Um, inside an existing estimate, I'm going to go into the system and show you where those units of measurements are visible. So I'll, I'll go into an estimate that exists already. And I'm just going to go into the items area. Again, this will be covered in another video later. But just as I pull up to add a new item to an estimate, the product selector will, will, will come up. And in the product selector here, we'll see in the sec in this middle section of the products that I have to choose from. So from here, I'm able to see the item name and the unit of measurement, the price, the cost, and the shipping. So this is where the unit of measurement is visible. And the unit of measurement is used in the system in a few different ways. Um, we, we look at square foot units of measurements and, and ask the input to contain lengths and widths um, so that we can calculate the square foot. Other types of units of measurement we designate as um, entering a straight quantity that you would like to have of that unit of measurement. So anyway, that's where the unit of measurement is used. Um, we've added a couple of units of measurement. So let's go back and look at pick lists again so that we can see the product categories pick lists. So in the product categories, Right now, as you'll see the list, these are completely customizable lists and you'll see where, where we drop these down later when you're adding products to the system. But we're going to add, we've only got one right now, we're going to add a couple of more for the rest of our working examples for sessions uh, 2, 3, and 4. So we'll add a product category called shingles and we'll also add another one called gutters. And finally, we'll add one called ice and water shield. Okay, now for these particular categories, you'll see again, I'll go back to the estimate so you can see where these are used. Okay, back at the estimate items, I'm going to add a new one. Before we were looking at the unit of measurement, and we saw that the unit of measurement was over here in the product section. Well, the product categories sit over here on the left-hand side, and as you'll see, all of the product categories are here. My three new ones that I added are here, and when you click on one of them, what it does is to look for all items 
that exist for that product category for the given set of suppliers. And as you'll see, there are none yet. In our next section, we'll add some products under those categories and they will show up here. But this is the way to easily drill down into different types of product categories. Finally, we're going to look at one other type of pick list here, and that is the letter categories. And in the letter categories, we've got a couple of types here. We've got welcome letters and job letters. We're going to add one more category, and that category is appointment letters. Add that. Now the reason we're adding appointment letters is so that when we come into the letter templates area, we'll be able to see all the different categories and which ones have letters assigned. Right now, appointment letters has none, but we'll add one again in session two. Okay, that covers the basic setup of the Roofing Estimator Pro web-based system version 2.0.